So next thing to cover in PLCs would be the three wire. We started with the two wire. We got a pretty good understanding of what we're doing. Uh, but let's go through the physical wiring of everything for this three wire. And then we'll get into the actual program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in uh, two lines here. And these two lines are going to correspond to my PLC program. And then on either side, I'm going to have my inputs and my outputs. So on this side right here, on the left, I'm going to have my inputs. And then I'm going to draw my outputs here on the right hand side. Okay, so uh, for my inputs, we've seen that on the previous video that if I plug 120 volts into the PLC, then there is 24 volts available DC that I can use to go out to my inputs. And the other side here says uh, zero volts. So this is my positive 24 volts and then my zero for my common. So I'm just going to label this guy as my negative. And then below here, I've got my common connection here. And then I'm going to start here with my first input. But remember, that my first input is labeled input zero. So out in the field, I've got uh, a stop normally closed contact here. So I'm going to make use of this guy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip out all of the switches out of this circuit right here for the three wire and place them individually into each individual input on the PLC. So the first one I'm going to start off with is my stop. I'm going to keep it as a, a normally closed, just like we have uh, wired above. And the wiring for this guy, let's do the wiring in, uh, let's do the wiring in blue here. Okay, so for this guy, we've got the positive going out in the field. Okay, that positive is now going to be my supply for this switch. And then from that switch, I'm going to go to my input. And then in order to close that circuit or complete that circuit, I'm going to connect my common to my negative. So I've got current going out in the field to the switch, from the switch to the input of the PLC. And then to close that circuit, I'm going from common over to the negative of my power, my power supply. Beautiful. Okay, next thing I'm going to hook up is my normally open start switch. So down here I've got input one. And in line with that guy, I've got a normally open push button that I'm going to use for my start switch. Okay, we'll finish off our wiring here. These guys are all going to be wired as sourcing inputs. Sourcing inputs meaning that uh, the positive of my supply is going to the switch. The switch is then switching the positive and providing a source of positive current into the PLC. The PLC already has a reference to the negative there. Beautiful. Okay, then we can label these guys. This one is my obviously my stop push button. Here's my start push button. And for now, those are going to be my two inputs. So I've taken care of this guy and this guy. Uh, we'll see in a little bit how to actually address them in the program here. On the outputs on the other side, I've got uh, a what I got? 120 to 24 volt uh, transformer. So let's draw that guy in. So I've got my 120 volt primary. Then on my secondary, I've got 24 volts. So you can see here on my uh, on my inputs, I've got a DC voltage, 24 volts DC. And on my outputs, I've got 24 volts AC. Come on, Pete. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do, let me just pause here. I'm going to move this transformer over so I have a little bit more to work with. Beautiful. Now, on the output side, I'm going to have my common here. So I'm going to label this guy as my common on the output side. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a, a fuse here. So I'm going to have a small one amp control fuse. And I'm going to wire my X1. Easy now. I'm going to wire my X1 to the common. So that's going to be my supply. So I've got 24 volts AC that I'm bringing into the common. And then I'm going to wait for the PLC to fire that 24 volts out to my output terminal and then back out to the field to any of my loads there. So my output terminals are going to be here. I'm just going to have one output for my motor contactor. Again, all of these guys start at zero. So there's my output terminal. Uh, and then I'm going to go out to my motor contactor. Uh, I'm going to go through my overload. So I'm going to put my uh, normally closed overload contact in series with my motor contactor there. And the remaining wiring is going to go from the output terminal to A1 of my motor contactor. From A2, I'm then going to go to my normally closed overload. And from there, I'll complete the circuit and go back to X2 of my transformer. So over here, I've got power coming from the transformer through my control fuse to the common. The common will fire on most likely with relay contacts through the, um, the PLC when the program actually tells it to. And then that 24 volts AC will be available here, which will transfer out to my motor contactor. And then in series with the motor contactor, I'll put my normally closed overload contact. So that if I have an overload, this guy's going to trip and it will stop my coil from getting current flow. The voltage may still be coming from the PLC, but I will show how to stop that later on. Uh, but it will definitely stop the current flowing in this secondary part of the circuit. So hopefully that clears up uh, the wiring. So as I go through these videos, I want you to make sure that I've done and covered the wiring properly. Uh, a lot of videos go through the programming, but they don't show you the actual wiring of your inputs and your outputs. Now let's go through addressing here. So I'm going to start off with my stop push button. I have my stop push button uh, physically wired into input zero. So I've got to address this guy the same. In the Tweedo suite, they use the percent. Then they've got I for input. And then we've got zero. And I'm going into my first terminal. So 0, 0.0. So I'm going to label this guy a percent input 0, 0.0. Okay, my start push button I have going into my input number one. So I'm going to label that guy percent input zero. It's going into the first terminal there. So same as here, I've got percent input dot one. So I've got percent input zero dot one. Excellent. Now I only have this single output right here. Uh, the outputs on the Tweedo suite, again, they label them with a percent. And then the outputs are Q. And this one here, uh, I've got my motor contactor physically wired to my output number 9. So I'm going to go 0 0.9. And that'll be the appropriate addressing for that output. So again, I'm just going to put a label over here just so I can keep track. Percent Q. 0.9 and at this point I'm going to keep this as an open loop meaning that I'm not actually going to wire up uh, this holding contact right here as an input I'm going to address this the same as my output so all I'm going to do is I'm going to look in the memory of the actual PLC I'm going to monitor to see when this turns on when the motor contactor turns on I'm going to monitor that its bit of information has gone from a 0 to a 1 and that'll provide another path of logic to keep my output on. So it's no longer the path of current that keeps the motor contactor on. It's the path of logic within the actual PLC. Because we've ripped everything out, our stop, our start, our, outlet, our motor contractor here. So we've ripped everything out. Uh, nothing is connected in series here anymore. 
they're all separated into the inputs. It's the program that's going to decide when that contactor actually turns on. So let me show you the, uh, the two different inputs that are available on the Tweedo suite, and I'm going to explain them, and then we'll go into the actual programming here in the middle. So our two options, let me just bring up the Tweedo suite here. Our two options for our inputs are this one, the contact normally open. So I'll drag that guy down and we have the contact normally closed. Now on the Allen Bradley, this one is called an examine if closed and this one is called an examine if open. On the Tweedo suite, this one is called contact normally open. This one is called contact normally closed. So we need to explain what each of those is, is used for. Um, so let me just bring up another page here. And I'm going to use, instead of the, the terminology from the Tweedo suite, I'm gonna use the same terminology uh, from the Allen Bradley. So uh, this symbol right here, that looks like a normally open contact, uh, is called an examine if closed. Now on the Tweedo suite, they call this a normally open contact. Um, but in Allen Bradley, it's called an examine if closed. So this input right here is looking for a number of things. One thing is that it's examining if something's actually going to be closed, or it's examining that there's voltage present at that terminal. Meaning that if you have an input terminal and you have that positive and it's going through this switch at that point, then at this point right here, there's voltage being impressed across that input terminal. This input instruction is going to look for that one or that voltage being present at that terminal. So if there's voltage available at that terminal, there'll be a one in the memory. And so this instruction right here is looking for a number of things. It's looking to see if something, if a push button is actually being closed. If that push button is closed, then that voltage is going to come along and be present at this terminal, right? So it's also examining that there's voltage present at the terminal. If there's voltage present at that terminal, then in the memory, we'll have a one. So it's also examining that there's a one in the PLC memory. And if we look at the output terminal, then when this output goes from a zero to a one, then that's gonna allow voltage to go out. So again, there's gonna be voltage present at that terminal. There's a one in the PLC memory. And when that voltage goes out in the field, it's going to turn on this control relay. So this input, which I'm going to call the examine if closed, is looking to see if something's closed, allowing that voltage to go to that terminal. If that voltage is available at that terminal, there'll be a one in the PLC. And if that is also on the output side, output going to a one means that the voltage is present here means that something's actually on. So an examine of closed is gonna look at if there's voltage, if there's a one, or whether something's actually on. This one here on Twitter Suite, which they call the normally closed contact, in Allen Bradley, they call this the examine if open. So it's asked backwards from the way that it's drawn. This is drawn as a normally closed, but we're gonna examine if it's open. So if we look at a push button and we make this an open push button, then this positive voltage comes over here, but unless we press that push button, there's no voltage available at that input terminal. So this instruction right here is looking if there's no voltage at the terminal, and if there's no voltage at the terminal, that means that there's a zero in the memory, and if there's a zero in the memory at the output, that means that there's no voltage at that terminal, which means that this control relay would be off. So one more time, an examine if open is gonna to look to see if something's open. If it's open, there's no voltage available at their terminal. If there's no voltage, the PLC will register as zero in the memory. And if there's a zero in the memory and there's no voltage available here, that means that the output is gonna be off. All right, so let's use this XIC and XIO and let's do our PLC programming now. Okay, so we'll just put some little tips here. So we'll put this guy right here. We're going to label this as an examine if closed, and that's going to look for a one. If we have this instruction right here, then that's an examine if open, 
and that's going to look for a zero or no voltage. Beautiful. Okay, so let's start with the stop push button. If nobody presses this normally closed stop push button, then it looks like voltage will be available here. It'll go through this switch because nobody's pressed this and voltage will be a apparent at that terminal right there. So as long as nobody has pressed that stop push button, there will be voltage. So we need an instruction that looks for voltage and the instruction that looks for voltage is this guy, the XIC right here. So for our stop push button, I'm going to draw in here. I'm going to use the XIC instruction for my stop push button. And I'm going to label that guy the same as we have above, input 0.0. .0. So I'm going to look to see that voltage is still available at that terminal and that nobody has pressed that stop push button. Beautiful. Now let's do the start push button. Now, in order for this motor contactor to turn on, somebody has to physically press that start push button. When they press that start push button, then this will close. Voltage will go over to this input terminal. So again, I'm looking for when somebody actually presses that push button. When they press that push button, the voltage will come into the input terminal. So I'm examining whether there's voltage at that input terminal. Again, the one that looks for that is this one, the examine if closed. So for that start push button, I'm going to use again an examine if closed. I'm going to address that the same as we have above. Percent input 0 0.1. So there is no hard and fast rule that a normally closed uses an examine if closed, or that a normally open uses an examine if open. There is no hard and fast rule. You just have to see whether you need voltage at the input or no voltage at the input. All right, guys. On the, the right-hand side, we're going to have our output. Holy, what's going on there, Pete? Okay, so we're going to go across. We have our output here. Remember, the output is the last um, item in the rung. And for this guy, we're going to have our motor contactor. Beautiful, and we address that guy as percent Q0.9 because I physically wired my motor contactor to my input, ter sorry, my output terminal number nine. Last thing we need is this holding contact. So I need something to see when that motor contactor turns on. This one looks for whether there's a one, whether there's voltage or whether something is on. This one with the XIO looks for a zero, no voltage, or whether something is off. So out of those two instructions, it looks like I need, again, the examine if closed, because it looks for when something's on. So I'm going to use that instruction there. Let me give myself a little bit more room here. Okay, so again, I'm going to use an examine if closed or examine if on in this case. I'm going to label that guy the same. And the address that I'm using is I'm going to physically look at the output bit. And when that output bit goes to a 1, then I'll know that it's on. And I can keep another path of logic to go to my motor contactor. So that's all we need so far, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video here because uh, I think we're 20 minutes in. So that'll that's basically the explanation for the three-wire. Uh, the next video in the playlist is going to look at the actual three wire. I'm going to do the programming on the Tweedo suite and we'll see it in action. And we'll see how to change this from an open loop to a closed loop. So actually wiring in the normally open of the motor contactor so we can see that it's actually turned on. But I'll stop there guys. I'll see you guys on the next video on the playlist.